Hi, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to be working on a big project or anything. As you can see, I'll be working on a Game Gear. Now, this was sent in to me by a member of the Australian uh, Vintage Computer Collectors group on Facebook. Um, and he asked me to install a Ben Venn IPS kit. So this is the package. And let's check out what goodies we get. So this is a really good Australian made uh, IPS replacement LCD kit for Game Gears, and I believe that Ben Ben also makes the uh, Lynx, Atari Lynx ones as well, but uh, yeah, you get this really nice looking screen kit here. Let's take that out. Really good bundle. Have a look at that. Ben Ben IPS. Really nice. Beautiful. And it is an IPX, IPS not the uh, the older crappier TFTs, so they look really fantastic. But Game Gear V1 Rev 3, really nice. Yeah, uh, and it comes with a uh, Game Gear Universal IPS uh, mounting bracket because if anyone's ever done a <laughs> LCD change on a Game Gear before, <laughs> aligning the screen is one of the biggest problems. It's just yeah, never ends up well. Anyway, and then also. Uh, I've ordered a ribbon kit. So this is to replace the typical wires that you would solder to the pins on the back here. So those are all the connection pins there. So instead of um, uh, having to hook individual wires up, this one actually just goes on there like so. And then those wires make that connection just a lot easier down on the uh, on the Game Gear's uh, old screen connector. So yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna be really good. Much, much simpler. So I reckon to start off with, let's, um, let's tear this down and get into it. Actually, before we start, let's uh, double check that it is working. Now I've put some batteries in. As you can see, just some Aldi specials, and uh, they've sent in a flash cart as well, so that's kind of cool. And you can see uh, that it's got an SD card, micro SD, no doubt loaded up with some games, so let's uh, pop it on and check it out. There we go. Oof, can you see that? I can barely see that. System is reset. There we go. All right, so, jeez. That is why we want to get these replaced. That screen is terrible. So let's try some Game Gear. There we go. Actually, I saw Aladdin down there, so let's do that. But yeah, you can see how absolutely terrible this screen is. Oh, okay, that's interesting. I've never used one of these uh, flash cards for the Game Gear. It looks like it uh, writes like an EEPROM internally before it uh, boots the game. Hmm, interesting. Okay. I'm holding that perfectly to the screen, but I can't see it from my angle here. Like, I can't see, can't see at all as soon as you're outside of that range. It's just absolutely terrible. So, like, you know, I'm, where I'm sitting here, I can see that, no problem, but this camera can't see that, and that camera can't see that, so that's why these screens and even there like look at that you can see kind of like the ghosting on the longer yeah these old old lcds and the old backlight just it's worth updating now apparently this game gear has already been recapped so i'm not gonna have to do that uh i will just need to install the screen so yeah let's um let's dive right into it now you will need a game bit driver for this comes in the ifixit kit which is really handy um, but part of the install, there's a little stand that goes there and that gets in the way of the LCD. So uh, you will need to internally clip that off and this screw won't go back in. Um, it's just, it's just how it is. <laughs> All right, and of course, when you open a Game Gear, there's ribbons at the top here that connect to the main board to the power and uh, sound boards. So you open like that, fold it open, and you can then uh, disconnect those cables from the top side, or from the back side, I should say, like that. 
and like that. And then there is the speaker as well, and that's the back side. Okay. Yeah, it does look like it has already been recapped, which is nice. Yeah, new caps, regular uh, electrolytics bent over. But yeah, yeah. And I'm probably going to need to clip maybe those two tines back because it can't touch the back of the LCD, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And there's the internals, and this has also been recapped, which is great. So let's just start by taking this board out. <laughs> Looks like it had some uh, some leakage previously. Wonder if we'll see any trace repair in this in this board. Okay, well let's pop that off to the side as well. Oh, and incidentally, that is the stalk that I noted earlier that the game bit screw goes into. That's the one that you'll be clipping out because when you put the LCD in, it uh, gets in the way. So, yep. Okay, so. There is the original rubber gasket. We will no longer need that. Uh -huh. Should also be able to let's have a, have a quick look, see if there was any trace repair done. It actually looks pretty clean, which is good. It means it wasn't too damaged. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, let's get the screen off. So disconnect that from the original plastic here. There's four screws. Already taken one out, so there's that. And that will lift the screen bezel off. And that ribbon cable. And that exposes the high voltage backlight circuit. Cool. So, now what we can do, start removing things. So, first of all, we want to get this screen off. So let's get the iron ready. And um, let's start by taking out the uh, yeah, the screen. So I'm going to peel... There, so there's soldered connections on this side, and there's a little bit of tape on the back side there that just kind of gives it stability. So what I'll do is I'll take that tape off, first of all. And just peel that off really gently. Okay. Now that that's loose, what we can do is go to the other side. And I like to do it at a bit of an angle like this. And all you do is you just apply a little bit of heat to the top of the solder point here while pulling kind of that way. And that will begin very gently. Don't don't actually give it heaps of Welly, just you're just really pulling it up and letting the iron do the work of, of loosening those points. And there's the screen off. Cable removed with no issues. So now what we'll do is we'll just grab a little bit of solder wick here. that off and let's just wick up all the rest of this leftover junk. Nice! Alright, so let's now take off the, the, uh, the backlight and the backlight shield. So to start with there are there's two fuses, one there and one here which are on the back side of the board and then there's the actual backlight element itself. So let's get the backlight out first, which we should just be able to do by heating that pin right 
there. I'll just do that. And then I'm just applying a little bit of pressure with my hand to lift, uh, on, sorry, on the inside, I should say, of the tube, gently, because it is glass. That should just melt there. That is not lifting. Oh, and of course, <clears throat> the smell of burnt electrolyte from the capacitor that would have been there. Obviously, they did. Whoever recapped this didn't do a great job cleaning it. Because <laughs> that stinks. Okay, well, let's get the other one out while we're here. Try not to burn these capacitors. There we go. Okay, so that one's down. Yeah, this one's really, that side's really stuck down. It's just, there we go. Okay. Much better. And that tube is now out. Hmm. Okay. Put that there. Yeah, we can see that that little bit of glue as well was holding that on there. So I'm just going to wipe that down because, like I said, it did stink of electrolyte. So it'd be good to clean the area again. I don't like thing leaving things dirty anyway, so... Now, I don't know with the Ben Van kit if I have to take these fuses out, so I'm, I think I do. I'm pretty sure I do, but uh, I will refer to the documentation. Okay, so... No, it looks like we just need to um, remove L2, which is this coil here. That's easy peasy. So that is this one. This might get a bit stinky because I can see the back of the board here is disgusting. I'm just going to heat up the joints and then walk it out really carefully. There we go. Done. Yeah, that had some corrosion on it. Good to remove. Okay, so we have the LCD panel and we have the bracket. Now, what will happen here is you generally want to take off the uh, thingy, but I won't do that just yet. This gets slid into the bracket like so. And then you can see that this long big tab here, I would want to line up with this big long tab on the end here, but it goes on the other side of the board. So if we place that down like that, and then this gets placed over, and then you can line that up like that. Now, what you can see as well, oh, I don't think you can see just yet, but I'll show you really quickly. On the panel here, you can see these holes yeah, and then there's a tiny one there. If you focus, there you are, and there's up here. And they uh, correspond to the matching uh, mounting holes on the PCB of where the screws previously were. lined up fine. That one did not. Oh, it was actually in the other screw hole. So let's try that one there. Okay. Take two. Don't over tighten these obviously because you are tapping a screw straight into plastic, which is bad. Okay, and there's our screen install. Very nice. Lovely. Alrighty, now it's time to bring in our ribbon cable. So this is the VAO and VA1 IPS ribbon cable. I do believe they do the Ben Ven stuff now supports VA5, 4 and 5. I'm not they, they never used to, but I'm not 100% sure on that anyway. Anyway, um, this goes on the board here. So this, oh, I should note, didn't note that earlier. This is a VA1. So this uh, ribbon will go on the board. It'll attach there. And then this side folds over like that. This will pick up, I think it's the third pin across. I'll have to double check that. Maybe the second one. Um, picks up on those con connections there. And then this will fold all the way over. And pick up on those two connections there and then there's a handful of 
other joints and whatnot that I can pick up on there. Now there's a couple here that I do believe I cut off according to the instructions. So they will be, if I align this correctly, uh, this guy and that guy will are unneeded in the VA1. So I will clip those now. Okay. And this guy down at the bottom there, there's the T10 pickup point, which is picked up elsewhere. Okay. Cool. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's get started. What I'm going to do is just grab a bit of solder. I'm going to tack on one of these points up here, the SMS point there. Bring this into alignment with that point right there. And solder that down. Now what I'll do is the other side will find the 5 volts. Pop some solder there. Which you can't see, but I assure you is happening. And then make sure that is nice and flat. And press that down as well. Beauty. And that is now nice and secure. So when I do the other ones, the solder should just flow straight through the board. And now that we've got some stability, I'll just go back through and touch up those first couple of connections. Great. Looks great. And now I'll just do these three here as well. Ooh, that one looks a bit unaligned so I might have to uh, might have to just adjust this a touch hmm that sucks so let's try that again just gonna make sure these have Nice blob of solder on them. Now because these are dry soldered now, I'm going to use a touch of flux to make my life easier. Just a absolutely minuscule amount. Oh, that Rossman level of flux. <laughs> You know, I don't want to heat this too much because he can damage this ribbon and I really don't want to do that. So, let's get that aligned again, shall we? Let's make sure we align all the pins this time. best work I had to redo that but it's down and it's on so let's clean up whatever flux floated to the top there so we need to connect a couple of pins here and there so what we can do I believe uh, we need to hook this one here up to the clock which is on I think it's FB1 so that pin is already there you can see where that one needs to go to, the CLK, and that needs to just be hooked up to that FB1 pin floating underneath there. So, I should just be able to wet the solder on there. Let's pop this under, that's getting annoying. Just underneath, there we go. And then just hold that down. And that'll attach like that. This connection, T10, gets picked up on the under underside, so we can leave that. But then what we will want, to, want to do is fold this board over, like so, and find which pins it goes to. Now the easy way is to line up that uh, little connection there. And that, I believe, goes to pin 2, so we want to hook it up to pin two, I think it's four maybe, but the second pin on the on the top row, so it goes 
there. And then once that one's aligned and it's nice and straight, the pins on the uh, ribbon here should just line up perfectly. But I will still verify. So let's uh, let's get that one in first because I probably should have done that before soldering on, uh, attaching the heat there. But uh, I can I can get in there. No problem. A bit of fresh solder on that. Pop that over the top. Okay, you can't see, but it's definitely on the top there. And then that is soldered in place. Okay, now we want to verify the pins that it is connecting to. And if you can see, the photo that I've got up on screen shows an install picture, and we can just count it off. It is one, two, three, four, five, six across. And we are, if we line that up nice and flush, we are one, two, three, four, five, and six across. So like I said, lines up really nicely. So let's take that down. What we'll do is just touch a bit of solder to the end here, fill the pad, and that should attach it down so now you can see that connection there. And the very first pin is holding the entire row down. And then I will go to the other side and do the same thing with that pin to verify it is nice and attached. Beautiful. Okay, now I will just really quickly go across and do the rest. Okay. And there is our connections. Lovely. Nice and clean and soldered securely. Now, this connection here, what we want to do is just fold it back and up so it goes underneath itself like that. And then they can go down to the M2 and M11 connections like so. So again, we'll just refresh the solder that's on these pads here. Some fresh stuff. And then tack those connections down. Oops, I got a bit hot under my finger. There we go. Cool, and then we can bend this down, not too sharply, but uh, just enough to be secure. Great, so there's one connection that we need to make still, which is over here. So this little ribbon cable thingy goes up and under the ribbon here and solders into the pin, pin on the very tip right there. And that will come across and connect up to one of these connections here. So it goes there, picking up on the middle of the three pins. So let's just tack that down. So, now of course don't do what I do and put it in upside down, <laughs> so it needs to go up. I'll just disconnect that really easily, flip it over, and tack it back down. And then it is going to This pin over here on capacitor C38 goes to the right hand side of C38 right there so it'll, I'll attach it right there. So in order to facilitate that I'll just put that out of the way for a second and just add a little bit of excess solder to that side of the pin of the capacitor. Lift it off and then we'll drop that back down and heat it down. Like so. 
And well, that should be it. So, what I want to do first of all, before putting it back together, is give it a test. So I do need a little bit to get that going. So what I'll do is I'll grab the power board here and hook that back in. So that is this guy. It goes in like so. Okay, I'll flip this around. There we go. Okay. And look at that. Let's see if the brightness works. Yes, it does. I don't think I can Let's see if I can get one of these buttons to press any key. There we go. How glorious does that look? And as you can see, you can check it from any angle. So. Let's see if we can... I don't even need to bother testing this. This looks fantastic. That is a beautiful screen. Like, come on. How could you not want to do this to your Game Gear? Anyone that doesn't do this is just silly. Like, that brightness. Oh, it's perfect. You get really bright, or you can get a little bit dim. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. Sea logo, gorgeous. Yeah, so it looks like the screen's a little bit out of whack. I think I can get that realigned a little bit better. Yeah. But uh, come on. Spot on. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I love Aladdin. It's so much fun. Anywho, there is our install complete. So now I just need to uh, tidy up and pop it back together. That took just under an hour or so. So, and even with me messing up a couple of times and having to go, go back and, uh, and redo my work. So yeah, pretty sweet little bit of kit. Okay. So I keep saying so, but what we're going to need to do now is like I said, clip off that post because it will press into here and be bad. So I am going to just grab my snips and clip it away. Now this might hurt some people because it does feel pretty terrible uh, cutting into your game gear, but uh, it's a necessary evil. Now don't do it really flush because if you mess it up, you can't <laughs> fix it again. So come up just a touch and there you go. And that'll that should leave just a little bit of a nub, but that's fine. So now if we attach this board down in here, we'll flip it over, and there's our thing. Oh, obviously I want to take that screen protector off before I give it back, but uh, yeah, that is sitting in there. Perfectly. Now I am going to put it back together with the screen protector in, just for now, because I want to give it a full test and make sure that alignment is properly done. So let's... Well, yeah, beautiful. Okay. So I'm just going to pull this back down apart, take that screen cover off, and then I will uh, button it up and uh, get it back to uh, its owner, so he can enjoy loads more games. screen a bit of a polish before I give it back, but uh, for now, I've got a date with some games. Thanks for watching.